All right, so we've talked about vignetting. We've talked about using a, a dissolved texture to get a little bit more granular, almost like colored, uh, like a construction paper. Talked about the border, sloppy edges, clean edges, internal, like internal borders, all that. And if these are the kind of solutions I like so far, another way we can play with, with the background is by doing what's called a texture overlay. Now, that vignetting is a little strong. Whenever you dodge and burn, I tend to overdo it. So I'm going to take the opacity of that down. So it's just barely there, but still makes a difference. Right. Still brings some intention to it. Any kind of variation that feels intentional. So another way is to do what we did with our fantasy landscapes when we we're adding a mist and stuff into them. And that's to, to find a texture overlay. So if I find one, I want something that's kind of linear and has some value to it. I don't want any with, because it just takes a lot of work to clean them up. I don't want any with uh, watermarks. And for educational purposes, you know, I don't need to, to pay for the rights to any of these. And they're not going to be recognizable in the final anyway. So I just find the largest one I can that is clean. And I can just drag and drop that if I'm using Photoshop right to it, and then stretch it out underneath my handmade border, right? So there's lots of reasons to make your own border so that everything is clean. So stretching it out, of course, softens it. I'm making more pixels. But it's just a texture. And it is in the background. And then I can use different blending modes, like pin light is often what I use for texture, right? Or soft light. And you can get that texture where, where you still get to control the color. So that kind of wood grain is pretty nice, pretty helpful to this print. Now, if I go to pin light, it's a little bit stronger, but then I can take the opacity down just to get a little bit of that value variation. And then if I duplicate it and then do soft light and then up the opacity on the soft light and put it underneath the lower opacity pin light, I can really control how much color variation there is, right? So texture overlays are fantastic. And let's see. I'm questioning the light vignetting with also my hand vignetting. <laughs> and also the uh, texture overlay, right? There just seems to be a lot going on. And for background, subtlety can be really good. Remember, I just don't want something really flat. So I think that works pretty well. I can always turn them off and see if I like it better with it or without it. I think I like it better with it. It's the great advantage of digital. Yeah, I just can't decide if I, if I like this or not. You know, I think I do. I think I do. But I might tone it down a little bit. Yeah. All right. So now I am happy with the texture, with the border, with the edge. Now I kind of know what I'm in for. So should the type stay black? Well, even if you think your finished poster should have a finished 
should have finished type that's black. I want you to play with color variations. And I'm not convinced that black is the best choice for me. But before I do that, of course, I want to save it. This is my assignment eight poster. So I want to save it with my name. Plug in my computer. And it will save. Okay, so now I want to um, really get into all the different options for the type. And remember, I brought in the PNG as a smart object for the type just to place it. Now that I know where it's going to place though, I wanna have even more versatility for the type. So to do that, I go back to where I created that with the, the stroke because just as a PNG, I can't turn off the stroke or the drop shadow. So I want to be able to turn those things on and off, whether I'm in Photo P or in Photoshop. So I go back to my files, right? And I go to this PSD, which is the one I was doing in Photo P. And I could go back to Photo P and do it. I think it's still open. Or I can just open up that other photo. PSD file, other Photoshop file in Photoshop and keep working on it there. Oh, where is my... So it gets complicated, all these different program options. Remember, you just need to, to have whatever raster program you're used to. So here I have it in, in Photo P, right? Spaced out, finished. So what do I want to do? Well, I saved it as a PSD file. So now I want to isolate it on its own and bring it into my poster file, right? And because this is already in Photoshop, I might as well do it between Photoshop files instead of between Photo P files. So I'm going to open this in Photoshop. So it'll be the third file I'm opening up in Photoshop. And what I like about Photoshop is you can just drag it out. You can find that layer. So it's going to be the text layer. Hmm. Oh, and it does have the effects on there. And I'm just going to drag and drop it onto my poster, right? Move it up on top. And then use the move tool in my, and often it will just snap on, and my arrow keys to nudge it in place. It looks like I have to grow it a tiny bit to match. So Command T, and grow it a bit. It is nice how working between Photoshop and Photo P works so well. Okay, so what's the difference there? Why did I do that? Well, because now I can turn off the stroke and the drop shadow before I color it, right? Even though I know that's how I want it if it's in black, I now can play with it in different ways for my color version. So first, I'm going to make sure the black and white version is right. And it is, right? But next, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to label this my color type. And now I'm going to start playing with coloring. And the easiest way, of course, is to use the layer styles. So. I can just make it a solid color. I can steal that color from different places. 
you know, my dark reds, my deep reds, my lighter reds. <laughs> I can try that. That's just a flat, you know, solid color. Not all that interesting. I think maybe this one would be, yeah, the good kind of strong basis. Hmm. It's hard to say. Okay. So that's one color type solution. But what, what are the other things we can add? Well, I can take the opacity of that down a little bit, right? And I can put on a gradient as well. And so my gradient, I might go uh, warm to cool. I can reverse it. And then I can set that to dissolve, and give it some texture, take its opacity down. So if we zoom in, we'll see now that just like the line art that I did for my chicken, I now have a slightly dissolved and gradated color type. What do I like better? Don't know yet. Now I can play with the edge. Like I have a drop shadow, but why don't I play with the stroke a little bit? Just like we did when we colored our logos. Maybe I want a thinner stroke. Maybe I want to bevel and emboss it, and add additional texture that way. That's subtle. Not very deep. I can take the opacity of the bevel and emboss shading, take it down. And change the angle of it. And that will change the angle of the drop shadow as well. If you use global. So there's just so much you can play with, right? Definitely adds a lot. I might want to add an inner glow because it looks a little light. Or it looks a little dark, rather, so I can brighten it up. And then that inner glow I can set to dissolve at a lower opacity, so it's barely there. And I can change the color to something warmer than the white. So we've got a lot going on in this type now. Yeah, I kind of like it. It looks like signage. And remember, you can always turn on and off these effects, right? It makes a big difference. Yeah. Kind of weird, but I like it. All right, so once you're happy with your type, then you've basically finished your poster, right? We're gonna still play with it some more. But the, the second thing you're gonna turn in is your color type solution. So to do that, you know, I'll save it as my Photoshop file, and then I'm gonna turn off every other layer. Turn off that border, just so the type is floating in the same proportion as it is on the poster. Save that as a PNG and upload that to PhotoBucket.